Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. Now, since the previous episodes where I revamped everything, got my um, geosynchronous satellites into the correct position, and all of that, all the mods have suddenly decided to update. Um, so, I had to update Realism Overhaul, I had to update uh, Real Solar System, Real Fuels, uh, Deadly Reentry, and so things have changed again and I need to look at the tech tree and see what parts might have been added by things. Uh, I did not update realistic progression light to the newest version because that will break my this tech tree situation I think. So I'll have to stick to this tech tree and realistic progression light version 18 but there have been other wrinkles, so I'll talk to you about that. But I do want to talk about a serious mission this time instead of just uh, configuring satellites. We'll hold off on creating our moon satellite network for a later date. And we'll look into doing something a little bit more local this time. Um, radio mount parachutes. I don't know why. I guess I, I think real shoot was also updated. So I guess some of this stuff is because of real shoot. Heat shield, that's daily reentry. Uh, reaction wheel module, I have no idea why we need an update on that. Um, let's see. More reaction wheel, okay. More parachute. And whatever that is. What is that? Pitch yaw thruster for the mercury. Well, um, we don't have the realistic progression light tech tree which would have added uh, some of the mercury stuff I think or maybe that's for FASA and I don't have that installed either so one thing I'm wondering about with this tech tree is will I ever get the claw because now we're in 0.23.5 but this tech tree wasn't made for 0.23.5 so it's possible that I'll never get that advanced grabbing unit if so I might have to add it in somewhere so that's that's one thing I have to think about, but let's let's go to all the other things I have to think about first. So one issue I had upgrading was that I needed to preserve my my satellite network, and th there's a little bit of a thing here. The realistic progression light tech tree, the the tweaks that it had for remote tech set it so that remote tech had 10 times the distance, the range on all of the satellites, and one-tenth of the power consumption. That's important. Now, the new version of Realism Overhaul comes with a configuration file for the remote tech mod that doesn't have those modifications, but modifies the, the antennas in different ways. And so that caused a lot of problems. That means that my satellites didn't have enough range using the new configuration with the consumption multiplier just set at 1 and the range multiplier just set at 1. Uh, let's take, because uh, we don't see the connection lines here, let's uh, jump to one of the satellites to talk about it in more detail. Okay, so this is TDRS Bermuda and as you can see it is connected. It is connected nicely and the reason it's connected is because I set the range multiplier to 5 and the consumption multiplier to 0.2. Now that doesn't mean that this thing is safe but uh, I'll explain why I chose 5. So it used to be 10 and really what it should be is 1 but I can't change to 1 because the entire network is dependent upon it being 10. Now that's how I planned it, but I calculated that the minimum it needs is 5. The reason is, we can take a look at the commutron here. Now it used to have a range of 25,000 kilometers. Now it has half of that, 12,500 kilometers. Why was 12,500 kilometers my preferred number? Well because you can see its apoapsis is 8,000 kilometers. And if you take the square root of 2 times that 8,000, you'll get about 11,000 something. And uh, if you do add a little bit of fudge factor, and the reason why you do a square root of 2 is because you can see there's a triangle here, and we assume that it's an isosceles triangle, 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, and that means this side, the hypotenuse, 
has a uh, square root of two times the the height. Though that's tricky. That's the height, and that's the height from the surface. And then there's a radius, and then you. you I think you get the picture. Um, the radius of the Earth is has to be added in, and so I'm I've got that little bit of a problem. However, that problem is solved by the fact that the antenna's range isn't limited to that 12,500. Uh, the range model is additive, which means that there's some combination of the two antenna ranges. So anyway, the point is that this is what I figured would be the minimal to keep this whole thing working. And if we if we go around the planet, let's just uh, take a look at how this antenna works as it uh, goes around. We see it maintains connection. Okay, so it's all good as long as I keep it here. It was not good if I tried to keep the range multiplier at one. That would have failed miserably. I don't mind having the new ranges if not for the fact that the whole setup that I have here is dependent on the old configuration so and let me go to the VAB and show you why I don't mind the new antenna ranges and why I probably would have preferred it if I could have set it to uh, range multiplier 1 and just kept it like that so let's go to VAB and take a look at that for a sec okay here we are and if we take a look at the antennas here you'll notice that they their mass is way lower than they used to be so the new configuration under realism overhaul sets their masses to a much smaller number and so I don't mind the lower range because now I can put something with uh, this huge range um, what is that it's one terameter so what one billion kilometers I think all right yeah sometimes anyway but uh, yeah so uh, plenty of range on these and their mass is fairly minimal so yeah so I don't mind the new ranges if not for the fact that I'd have to launch everything over again and so I didn't want to bother with that so and actually these are five times what they ought to be really this should be 200 uh, million kilometers and uh, this would be what uh, one billion kilometers which is fair enough you know um, so here you see the commutron it does say it has uh, 12,500 kilometers and what it really should be if I didn't have the multiplier at 5 is 2,500 kilometers so okay so that's just how I've had to do it to keep the system working and to not relaunch everything from scratch alright so that's full disclosure for you the the energy consumption is higher now by a factor of two it should have been a factor of ten but there's no way I my network could have sustained that as it is it seems like my network is more or less a Schrodinger network in that as long as I don't look at it it'll be alright if I look at it uh, if I look at any of the satellites their power consumption will probably drop and they'll probably end up dead so that's the situation but that's not the only problem we've got to deal with let me show you the other one okay so here's the Vern 473 which I was planning to send to the moon and attempt to land on it and everything's looking good so far until we get to around here and there and there what has happened well what has happened is that these, which used to be able to stretch all the way to the 3 meters, can't anymore. Uh, these little interstage adapters can stretch to about here, about 2.5 meters. And so they just reset to the, their default instead of allowing me to do the full 3 meters. So now we've got a little bit of a problem. Our stages are not the right size, but we are going to fix this. We're going to fix this right now. So let's get our... We, we just need the tanks to be the same. Now, yes, okay, I've got uh, fully flexible... T oh, no, this is a conic tank even. Wow. Okay, so let's just fix it up. And then we can just get going after that. Uh, well, we won't get going with this. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Like I said, we're going to be hanging around Kerbin for a bit. 
so that I can avoid doing like a hundred CompSat episodes in a row. Okay, 2.5 by 2.5. Oh, this is a set 3 meter tank. And that's a set 3 meter tank as well. So let's set these aside. Set those aside, set that aside, that aside. Erezine N204, straight up. We might be able to keep this uh, 3 meters. Let me take a look at that. Um, let's deal with this one first. This one definitely will have to be smaller. So yeah. So what we want is a... Let's just go for... Uh, is there just straight up... Conic tank. No, let's go for the cryogenic one. I think this is a... What is this? This is the... Yeah, this is liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. This one was kerosene. Probably best to just go with this anyway. Because it still has the liquid oxygen. Okay. The only cylindrical one we have here is a service module, which is funny. Okay, there we go. So then we'll be able to put this down here, though we'll have to fill it up with proper fuel. Now what about this? Maybe we could just leave this 3 meters and have some sort of conic tank to smooth things out here. Seems like the fairing base is actually a little bit less than uh, 2.5. This is as much as I can stretch it. Oh well. Since we're using the same engines, I'm gonna still call this for city. Why is this not 2.5? It's a little bit less than that. That's frustrating. I don't like it being a little bit less than that. It means instead of it being intended, it feels like there's something wrong here. Well, uh, let's let's just size the tanks to match it. Uh, there's no point arguing with the program. Looks like 2.4 for some reason. Why would it be 2.4? Unfortunately, this this engine is 2.5. So let's just keep that matching and taper the top. Okay, so now we have to figure out how to balance our rebalance our stages. We've got everything but the boosters. Let's get the boosters on. If we can grab the decoupler there. Right. Slide those down a little bit more. Okay, we'll go with this sort of look. Now let's fill the tanks. Well, they seem to be ready full. Why are they ready full? Why do I have these stats? This tank is empty. How could it have stats? Okay. Well, there's something broken with Mechjeb. <laughs> I gotta say, there must be something wrong here. Okay, well, let's uh, ignore Mechjeb for a little bit. This one is still the original tank, Erezine N204. We need to fill this one with Erezine and N204 as well. This one's Kerosene. This one is exactly as it should be. Alright, that's fine. Oh, okay. Alright, so that, that, that was fine. Uh, well, let's get the top fairing on. As expected, not quite working out right. These 
those struts that were meant to hold things together are in the wrong place. Alright, that's fine. Now, oh yes, we... Yeah, we had that. Oh, I guess it's just not configured properly. There, there we go. I was wondering where my cone was. Okay. So, cone is there. Okay. We got a lot of Delta V, don't we? But we've got the staging completely wrong. This should go here. There's something deeply disconcerting about the way this is staging. This is this doesn't look too bad actually. Five. Well, one is is quite a lot. So we don't need to go to such lengths, surely. Uh, how about four and a half minutes? Oh. Somehow, things look a lot better than they used to, don't they? I feel like something is messing with me. And it's probably mech jeb. This is the lander stage, we don't even have to think about that. Everything looks good. Why does everything look so good? Okay, I think we're we're okay. Vern for study four. Now, what I want to do sorry for taking so long on this. It's necessary but perhaps not so interesting. What I want to do now is save the Forsetti as a subassembly. Come on. Alright. So that's the 474 launcher. And I want to load the Asimov Dillinger 2. Strangely, this one also has the same problem with the procedural fairings, but that is not our issue today. We do not care about that at all. Because we're going to dump the Dillinger launcher. And we are mostly interested in this portion. What we want to do is a series of missions. The first one is going to be just testing out this capsule with the Forsetti launcher into Kerbin orbit. And we are going to attempt a Kerbin orbit rendezvous. And potentially docking. So that is the plan. And if we're going to dock, this is going to be a problem. We need to figure out where to put the parachutes. I think... Real chutes is a bit big. We'll probably have to put them on the side then. This whole RCS configuration needs to be reworked. It helped uh, to give us some sort of aerodynamic lean into things, but I don't think I want to do that this time. What I really want to do is make sure that everything is safe and we can do this properly. So we're going to have the Clampatron Jr. But I want really one of the conic service conic service module. Whoa! Suddenly very big. Okay, uh, this is not working because things are in the way. Okay, that's looking good. How much hydrazine can we get into this thing? Seventy units. Oh, that's not too bad. Maybe we need it bigger though. 84 units. Okay. Now, obviously if we've got this docking port at the top, 
we need to look into a number of different things. The first thing is the radio mount parachutes. Where are they? There they are. So we need two of those. And preferably mounted on the capsule rather than the... Okay, that's that's actually very good. It sort of smooths out the lines to the retro rockets there. Okay, and then a launch scale. Ooh, that's big. Um, there must be a smaller one somewhere. We need a decoupler anyway. Or perhaps I should just make a manual launch escape system. Oh, well, let's put a decoupler on first. I think one of the stock ones will do, right? Is this one of the... Yeah. Okay, so this is the launch es escape system I've got. It's really just four of these. And... And yeah, it should be sufficient. If uh, if we really needed a launch escape system, let's let's make sure we've got everything Ashen Group properly. So as a board, we could use these two, but we probably won't need to. And those could be used to soften the landing. I think probably the best thing to do with them. So instead, we'll uh, activate these. And those will be sufficient. As you can see, the the thrust weight ratio is uh, 4.8, and that's actually more than the rocket itself ever does. So it should be fine. All right. So we've got parachutes. We've got everything. We've got the launch escape system. We've got that. We can pull this back down. I just put uh, this decoupler up in order to check how the launch escape escape system would be. But we've got that now. Alright, I think uh, this is our new Asimov capsule. Let's call it Asimov 2. Let's get a Fercelli launcher. And stick it underneath. Now, as we can see, there is a little bit of a mismatch here. And that's fine, because we need to put a little bit of a thing in the middle there called a service module. If we're not going to have a service module, it'll be a little bit difficult to do the rendezvous. Uh, this decoupler doesn't look right. Of course, with it being 2.4 meters in diameter, the whole stack, I don't think anything will look perfect, but one of the flatter ones will probably do a better job. Uh, two meter. Oh. Maybe it's the best we can do after all. What's a two meter of this look like? Still looks icky. All right, 2.5 it is. I'll go with this. Right now, how much stuff can we pack into this? Maybe not just hydrazine. Let's see. Let's just use the same thruster blocks we've got here. Uh, so, alt, and we'll get four of them. Okay, and then perhaps a re big reaction, well, it's funny, we've got this huge reaction wheel and then we've got this tiny reaction wheel, nothing in between really, so oh well, nothing there. Any small rockets that we could use for a bit of an assistance, something off to the side, these guys. RD-856s. 
the Skylon, Sklon, whatever, rocket. Hmm. Very curable, but don't look quite right. How about these guys? How big are they? Oh, come on, come on, go away. Thruster for orbital maneuvers similar to ones used in the Galileo probe. Lots of stuff in the Galileo probe in this, but that doesn't look too bad. What does it run on? MMH N204. Okay. Let's tone things down a little bit. So let's add, say, 400 hydrazine. And the rest MMH N204. What does that do for us? Where is everything? How does this study is like electric charge? Okay. Electric igniter sounds good to me. Two thousand eight hundred Delta V. Very nice. Uh, very, very slow. But, um, actually maybe we should tone down the mass of this whole thing. Let's, well the hydrazine is really key, but it really has a huge effect. I'm gonna keep it in and just cut these guys to more reasonable amounts. Yeah. I mean, why, why even have that much? Maybe... Oh, you know what? This would be good for a moon return kind of thing. So, let's put enough for a moon return. Okay. That looks about right. We aren't configured for the moon yet, but so uh, we can think about that. Uh, for the moon, we wouldn't need nearly as much hydrazine. Oh, well, let's say we didn't need as much hydrazine. How much? That shouldn't be too bad. Okay. Okay, so this is Asimov 2. For SETI 4. Sorry for all the Roman numerals. And the question is, have I forgotten anything? That is the that is the million dollar question at this point. Okay, we really don't need those. Okay, make sure get out of the way. Okay, what is selected? Okay, these are up there. So these are the Ullage rockets. And in fact here, huh? And then that's that decoupler. All right, we'll we'll keep the LH rockets near its own stage, because we we've got a lot of solid rocket boosters now. These definitely don't need to fire at the same time as the parachutes, please. Otherwise, these can hang out up there. And they're the coupler. That probably happens way earlier. Somewhere there. Whoo! Lots of stuff happening all over the place, huh? So, do you think this will work? Let's save this crew. So, we just want to get into orbit this time, and then next time. I'm going to send somebody up to rendezvous with the guy already up there. We're going to send two of these up and try uh, in-orbit rendezvous. Uh, this toolbar needs to go somewhere else. Oh, wow. Huh. Oh, <laughs> okay. 
Uh, I see. All right. I think it should be Bill and Bob, right? Keep in mind, dead is dead, and we've got some problems with this thing, pro probably. Camden and Camner. Yeah. Camden first. Alright, Camden Kerman, you're going to be sent up on the first launch of the Asimov 2474. I've got an abort set up. Everything I could possibly think of. Uh, electric charge should be fine. The capsule itself has 48,600. Though, that said, there's no reason why we can't put uh, a token amount of solar panels on this thing. No reason whatsoever. There, token amount of solar panels. So that makes you feel better. So let's make sure... Yeah, I knew Jeb would sneak back in there. Okay, that's enough. Now let's go. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay, sorry, I need to fix one more thing. We don't have the right amount of launch clamps. I think I need one at the top. Let's... Let's add another launch clamp at the top. Just one. There. Shall we also have one of those crew things? The, since I added the FASA launch tower. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah, that's the way we do things around here. But I'll, uh, I, I won't uh, actually go through all that rigmarole right now. Let's just get Camden in there and set up. All right. Okay, so here it is, a nighttime launch. Our fuel is being loaded up, as you can see, into a four. Hopefully, none in the top. Uh, yeah, it should, it's only in the bottom stage. Okay, liquid oxygen, aerosene, now loading up into our rocket. Gives us a little bit of time to take a look at the map and a reminder why the whole orbital rendezvous thing is a little bit trickier now. It's because we are launching from Cape Canaveral and we could have been launching from uh, alternate locations. As you can see, we do have a second mission control now. In fact, uh, we've got plenty of launch sites now uh, thanks to the new update. But for now we're launching out Cape Canaveral and we're going to try and do the orbital rendezvous. And the trick is that we have to make sure to launch the second mission at the right time. That's basically it. Otherwise it's all a matter of patience, which I'm also not particularly good at. Uh, let's see, what's the best lit angle on this? Can't really see the capsule very well, but I guess that's the best look. All right, are we all re ready to go? Looks like it. So vessel mass 203 tons, and we're going to be pushing Camlin Kerman with a service module up into orbit. He's got 17 days with food, water, and oxygen, and that should be enough for him as he waits for the arrival of his compatriot. Okay. <sighs> Cross your fingers, folks. Here we go. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Staging error. Many staging errors. Okay, well this is a problem. No, not that. We've got problems, we've got problems. 
Yeah, sure. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I don't know how much... Well, we burned basically all of the solid rocket boosters there. Well, that was silly. I think we can still make it. Okay, you saw rocket boosters off, but we can. We're still a go. <laughs> we're still a go, uh, despite that. After all, the Four City was meant to launch stuff. Meant to launch stuff to the moon. Wow, it's been a while since I've heard Chatterer and all that, uh, all that stuff going on. Frequencies. Oh, those are the solid boosters. Um, Frequency is only 60 to 90 seconds. They sure seem to be talking a lot just now while, while we were in big trouble. Oh, I can't believe I forgot to put the launch clamps in the base stage. But we were doing a lot of different things in this, uh, rebuilding this, getting the rocket back to serviceable condition. Okay, we're just gonna go 90. We gotta bring mech, mech, mech Jeb out and... What the heck just happened? Aerodynamic failure. Interesting. Pitch 85. Execute. Give me 80 actually. Uh... Hmm... Well, so much for our escape system. It looks like that's not a good way to go. All those little SRBs seem to be totally... Well, they're a bad idea. Okay, so noted. We continue. Well, I think it'd be... Uh wild stretch of the imagination to say that this launch has been nominal so far but our flight status is nominal thank you updated far food water oxygen one day we have another problem Okay, uh -huh. it looks like the SRBs at the top also managed to take out our food supply. That was clever of them. Still got our parachutes, but food supply, big problem. Camden is not looking happy. I wonder why the arrows in an N204 are sort of separated like that. I mean, I guess it's being paired with the MMH for some reason. Uh, we seem to be below 30. Why are we below 30? Um, let's go to 35 then, because I don't like this at all. Oh, well, we don't have any fairings to worry about, but we've got plenty of other things to worry about, it looks like. Now we're going above. Hey, 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 hey! Uh, and here I thought 
smart ASS would uh, be a little bit smarter about this is now I've got tweakable gimbal on this very important I think and I've got to tweak that up a bit okay stage is done Cross your fingers. Separation. Okay, I press space bar. Okay, I can't quite see. Ignition. Okay, good. We continue. How's the gimbling on this rocket? Alright, let's up that a bit. Keep it steady, smart ASS. Steady! Now I'm taking my own uh, initiative on the control stick. I'm gonna try and put him into about 240 by 240, though it might be a little bit higher than that. We're not getting a read on the stage delta V on this one. That's a bit worrying. I don't entirely trust the total delta V if we're not going to be able to see what this stage is going to do. But more importantly, I can't see the stage time. Looks like we should have enough time, but I, I think it was about five minutes. Maybe a little bit less than five minutes. I think we can flatten out a little bit. Get a little bit closer to our prograde vector. Oh, uh, the escape system is still attached. I'm actually surprised. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any rockets on it now, do we? Actually, we do. Where did the rockets come off of? I guess they come off came off of the pod itself. Is that what happened? Okay. This is tricky business because I want to ignite these rockets at the same time I decouple. That might be dangerous, though. Yeah, it looks like it was actually two on the capsule itself that that fell off. Okay, I'm gonna try and uh, get rid of the escape system. So, well, actually that works kind of thing. Let's see. I hate it when I press spacebar and nothing happens. It makes me so jittery. Okay. I think, I think we successfully got rid of the escape system. Uh, it might be that we still got the decoupler attached. I might have put it in the wrong way. Well, once we get into orbit, we'll take a look at that. Ah, now that we got rid of the escape system, we can see our stage time and everything. Much improvement. Camden's looking happy too. Apoapsis is getting a little bit out of hand here. Okay, we're just going to fire this as it is. Okay. Uh, how's our gambling on here? Because Smegjeb seems to need a lot. Well, we've got three here. Smegjeb doesn't seem to be too happy with this mount. Oh well. Okay, we're getting to the critical part of the proceedings. Gotta turn Smart ASS off and gauge my own control.
Looking good, though. Okay, well that'll be our orbit. Uh, 333 by 254. Not the best orbit on the planet, but considering how much went wrong with this this mission, I think uh, we should be thankful. Uh, we'll have to wait until we get into the light to see what we can do about the docking ring. The Clampatron Jr. only has control from here. Okay, so I think the... not docking ring, the, the decoupler seems to be drifting off. I think it'll be alright. So, in theory, we could dock another mission to this. The question is whether with only one day's worth of food, water, and oxygen, we might want to scrub this one, uh, bring him back, so, you know, try to make sure we bring him back safely and revamp the whole thing. You'll notice that we've got 2,771 units of Delta V left in this stage. We need 3,300 minimum for a uh, transfer to the moon. And so if we hadn't burned those solid rocket boosters out trying to declamp from the launch pad, we might be a lot closer to that. And of course this uh, the service module connected to the capsule already has enough juice to, uh, if we get into orbit around the moon, which we don't intend to do, to bring the capsule back. So that has enough to actually break orbit from the moon. I don't think we would be trying to get into orbit around the moon with this. We would actually just be having whoever we send fly by the moon and then return. So plenty of plenty of room to spare as far as that type of mission is concerned. Getting into orbit around the moon is a different story. We don't have enough with this, though we're not too far off. So lots to think about, and I'm not going to decide in this episode whether to bring Camden back or whether to attempt the rendezvous anyway. It's not that we don't have time. A day a day might be enough or might not be enough. It's a tricky rendezvous. So I'll decide that in the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this one even though there was a lot of building involved. We did we did send Camden up and that is something we haven't done in a while. So yes, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video please do press like. If you have any comments suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.